Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video on scroll saw. We have our Porter Cable 18 inch variable speed scroll saw. Before we get into the operation of the saw, I want to get into a couple features of it. This is a beveled saw, so we can control the angle of our deck in relation to the saw. And we do that here. There's a stacked uh, knob here. The, the one that's furthest away from the saw is actually the locking. So we can actually turn this out, and then that's going to let us use the larger ring. And this larger ring is going to tr control the bevel of the saw. So when we go one way, we only get to 15 degrees, but the other way goes all the way out to 45 degrees. So once we get it into our position, we want to make sure that we lock it in place. And for our demonstration today, we're only going to look at that even cut. And we have an indicator window right here to make sure that we're at the right belt. So we're locked that in place and everything's fine. So these, these other things that you see here on the side, is this is an air hose. It actually just sends tiny puffs of air to keep the, the work area clean. And this is a light. Now, the, these are just posable, so you just put them wherever you like. Now, the, the light does have a switch that's right up here on the top of the saw. I always like to leave it on because it's a good indicator of whether the saw is plugged in or not. So we, but you can position these wherever you want uh, in relation to your work. There is a guard right here, and this is primarily to keep your hands away from this blade. So this blade is a little uh, unusual in the sense that it's just a straight blade that bounces up and down. It's not, it's not too terribly different than a saw that you would use with your hand other than the machines going up and down. Now there is a variable control, and that's the knob right here, and you can speed it up or slow down your blade. It is taking the same stroke, it's just how rapidly is it going. And that's going to be based on your material and how tight you want those curves to be. Uh, to change our blades, there's a lock right here, uh, which once you pull this up, it relieves the tension that's on the blade, because this blade needs to be pretty darn close to banjo string tight. So we have a locking nut here and another one down at the bottom. So if this blade were to break or you need to change blades and you're not sure how to do that, find a facilitator or shop aid and we can walk you through that process until you get comfortable with that. Um, otherwise, you're going to need to see us for blades anyways. So all of our tools are locked out. So whenever you are ready to use this tool, you would find a facilitator or a shop aid and ask for that tool. This particular tool is tool number 11. You'll turn in your trust card and then you'll get, you'll get the key and it functions just like any other lock. He goes in, you unlock it. Now instead of just setting this box and lock someplace down and trying to keep up with it, we're actually going to close this box around the cord, put the lock back on, and then we're going to retain, retain just this key. I tend to put them in my back pocket. So then I, I, since I'm close to an outlet already, I'm just going to plug this straight in. If I needed to operate this tool away from the wall and I needed an extension cord, I would just find a facilitator or a shop aid and go ahead and get that. Now the advantage of the scroll saw is you're not limited to straight cuts like you are like a circular saw, a table saw, or a router saw. So, not router saw, miter saw. So, the good thing about this is, is we can go ahead and draw that line that's really going to show the cut that we want. And this, this saw is going to allow us to do that. And you can see as I plugged it in, my light came on, so it's a really great indicator that I know it's working. So uh, one thing to pay attention to is the amount of teeth that's on the blade. A very high tooth count when the teeth are very, very close together, that's the heart of the material, like a metal or a very dense plastic would have very, very close teeth together. And wood, the, a saw blade meant for wood is going to have teeth that are slightly farther apart. Now, if I'm planning on doing lots of scroll work where I'm moving the, base, the material around, I'm going to want to run at a fairly high speed, so it's cutting that material as I'm moving. If I'm doing that precision work where I'm moving very slowly and making sure that my line stays true, I'm going to run at a slightly slower speed. So the, the, uh, the switch on here, is, it's actually somewhat similar to the switch that we see on the table saw where it's very easy to turn off, but it's slightly harder to turn, uh, turn on. So, as with all tools, after we plug it in, we want to make sure it's operational, so we'll turn it on. So this is, a, this is a medium speed. You see this saw is not very loud, but we can dial this, we can dial this down, 
to where the saw is making nice even strokes and it's probably a little bit faster than we could do by hand but then we can we can turn this up and anytime you're making these adjustments you don't want to do them too rapidly you're not trying to jog this but then as you can see we can get this up to a very high rate of speed that's going to allow us to go through material relatively rapidly then we're going to turn that on just a bump of the switch to turn it on so as we're making our cut if our cut is very, very tight, one thing we may want to do is make relief cuts. And what a relief cut is, is it's just a cut that will go from the sidewall of material into your line, so that way when you're cutting and you finally get to that piece, that piece will come off and you're not having to work with that excess material. So I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of relief cuts, show you what that looks like. So I've just done a couple relief cuts right here and you can see that it just goes from the outside of the material into that line so when I get when I'm cutting that line these pieces will fall off less material to get in my way also as that saw is cutting you may feel that lifting so you're going to want to have really steady downward pressure to keep this piece from bouncing as it saws on its upstroke so maintaining good control of, of your material is going to be very important so as I'm going it doesn't matter which end you start with whichever is more comfortable but ultimately, you just maintain positive control of your material because the saw is bouncing. And then as you're cutting, you'll notice is the, where those relief cuts were made is that material ends up around the saw. Don't reach in here while this saw is active to turn this off to, uh, to get this material out of the way. You can, as you're moving your material, your material can move it out of the way. If you really need it out of the way, you can wait till you get to one of your relief cuts, stop, turn the saw off, get that material out of your way. But that material, but that saw does let us to make these not straight curves. Now the saw is capable of doing much tighter turns and you'll find as you're getting used to that saw and getting used to our other equipment where those limitations are and, and essentially you're going to find that, that your abilities are going to be more limiting than the, than the saw is. So as you grow the, uh, the material and the work you're doing is going to grow with you. So if you have any questions about using the scroll saw, um, come find a facilitator, someone who has more experience with the saw. If you don't, keep up the good work. Thanks.